So we continue on here with everything going on at the International House of Prayer. And yes, the self-proclaimed prophet himself, Bob Hartley, who many have started calling uh, Mike Bickle number two. And I think that's definitely fair based off everything uh, that we now know about Hartley that has been coming out across social media. And look, all the receipts have been shown, text messages, video, audio, all of it. And good on Michelle Seidler, former IHOP KC leader, who has been very vocal about everything that happened here uh, with Bob. And it's just continuing to uh, really play itself out as the exposure continues. Well, Hartley himself has now responded to these allegations. And boy, did he have some things to say. We'll talk about it in just a second. Welcome, everybody, to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you on the news of the end times and so much more. Thanks for spending part of your day with me today, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. And for someone like me, well, it's kind of my only option. I remind you guys as well, if you enjoy and appreciate the work I do here, why not consider blessing my ministry with a generous donation? I could really use your help. There's a couple of different ways you could do it. One easy way, just click the super thanks button down below on this video here. That's how you can tip me with a one-time donation of any amount. Whatever you can contribute, it helps and adds up. Doesn't matter how small or how big. Or become a premium member of Not By Sight News. You can join my Patreon today for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash Not By Sight News. Link in the description. When you join the Patreon, you get all the videos before they ever hit my main YT platform. I always take care of the Patreon members first. You also get exclusive links over there to these topics that we discuss. And I include them over on Patreon now just because the way things are getting on YT. I don't want to take any chances of putting certain things in the description they don't like. So it'll be for you on Patreon. Also there, comment censorship free on all videos and even send me DMs. So check it out again, patreon.com slash news link in the description. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. So I've been talking about Bob Hartley and the fact that now it is official. IHOP KC spokesperson Eric Voles, he came out with a statement on social media saying that due to the new inappropriate behavior that has been revealed of Bob Hartley, he is no longer permitted access to the prayer room, whether as just, you know, a regular attendant or somebody who's actually one of the speakers. He will not be allowed whatsoever anywhere near the prayer room. Now, I'm assuming also that would include the whole campus itself, although uh, that wasn't really specified by Vols. Now, it's also important to know with Hartley, he is not on staff with IHOP KC. Uh, he has, you know, taught there. He has served as a prophet. Uh, you know, you got to love these guys when they call themselves prophets because, you know, this is how they, you know, by and large have manipulated all of these survivors over the years by promising them these things from God. And God showed me a vision of you doing this and that. And like I've talked about it with Mike Bickle and how he did the same thing. And, and Bickle and Hartley are good friends. And you got to go all the way back to the very beginning of IHOP KC because it was Hartley himself who really helped to, you know, to fund the buildings and everything to get, you know, the prayer room and, and everything going up and off the ground for Mike Bickle. So he was instrumental in the very early, you know, starts of IHOP KC. Uh, not to mention that him and Bickle were pastors together even before IHOP KC even launched. Um, these two are thick as thieves. And, you know, Hartley, it should have been pretty obvious that once he started defending Mike Bickle and, you know, the last couple of months that, you know, this is a birds of a feather situation here because these two uh, were engaged in the same type of inappropriate behavior. And so, you know, he was going to do everything he could to defend Mike in this situation. But uh, thankfully, Michelle Seidler, who used to teach at IHOP KC, and she actually has admitted that she herself uh, is somebody uh, who was, you know, uh, one of the, the survivors of Hartley. She talked about inappropriate behavior even against herself from Hartley. She has been posting these, you know, text message screenshots from various uh, women who have, you know, come to her with their stories. And she had known about this long before, but uh, just now we've started to see all the receipts come out about Hartley. Uh, and because of that, again, Vols came out with the announcement, Hartley, banned from the prayer room. He should be in, honestly, he should be in jail uh, for everything that he has done. And 
Uh, if you guys didn't already check it out, I do have the audio up on my Patreon right now of Hartley. Uh, and this is when, you know, he was offering to pay this survivor uh, a bunch of, well, basically, how much money do you want, he said. And, you know, we'll go ahead and handle business, if you know what I mean. Started talking about, you know, where he was living and the nice views and we can get comfortable and all this stuff. So if you missed that, it's on my Patreon right now. You can, you know, and again, it's it's over there for a reason just because of what's being said. So now we have Hartley who has responded in a couple of just really, you know, blabbering type of rants on his Facebook. Uh, incoherent, some have even said, which I can, because I said before, it sounds like this guy was either like drunk or, you know, he smoked about six packs of cigarettes before he started to talk. Uh, but in typical fashion of these individuals who, you know, get caught up and they get exposed for being uh, the the animals that they really are, he says, I admit to some making some past mistakes. Now, <laughs> what those mistakes were, he didn't say. Some past mistakes. But then came the blame game, of course, and this is what he had to say, that, well, not everything that you're reading about me is true, because you see, I have a, a password that's very easy to guess. And so I believe that I've been hacked, he said, <laughs> and that people who have it out for me were putting out these things about me that were just not true. Oh, but not only that, he also blamed the fact that he's needed to start taking Adderall to handle and cope with his divorce. <laughs> and, oh, let's not forget this too. This is another big part. He also blamed witchcraft as a reason that all this is happening to him. No, nothing was, you know, you know, said on his part of him taking personal responsibility for his own actions. No, no, he's blaming the Adderall, the divorce, the witchcraft, and the hacking of his phone for why this is all happening. But he made some past mistakes. Oh, and then he said this too, because he said this, that his relationships have with these survivors have all been consensual. And these are very, very strong women, he said. And in no way at all would they ever allow myself or anybody else, for that matter, to manipulate them into doing something they didn't want to do. Oh, I'm sure that's exactly what it is, because in some of these audio recordings, you can clearly hear uh, the survivors on the other line uh, extremely nervous, panicked, scared, whatever you want to call it. Uh, he took advantage of them, and again, he used prophecy, much like Mike Bickle did, to get what he wanted. And remember, this is somebody who had you know, the money, the influence, was instrumental in helping to start IHOP KC, and he effectively used all of that to get what he wanted. In fact, even intimidating former IHOP KC leaders... One being Dave Thomas, who has actually spoke about this as well, and how several times he had brought the allegations uh, of, of Hartley to other staff there at IHOP KC that just said, mm, well, we don't, we don't really want to handle it, to be perfectly honest. And they used the excuse of because Bob Hartley wasn't on staff, they didn't find it to be an issue. Look, it doesn't matter. If you got somebody, whether they're on staff or not, if this guy is coming in there and he is in the prayer room, he's speaking, he's leading prayer, whatever the case, you have to look into that. You can't just say, oh, because he's not on staff. Not, not that they actually looked into any of the allegations of those that were on staff that were involved in inappropriate behavior, because we know they didn't do that either. But this is what Thomas said. And even at one point, he said that he was approached by Bob in the prayer room. This was in uh, just a couple years ago, in uh, 2022. And he told him, you know, I can get you fired at any point that I want to. Sounds like a real winner, doesn't it, Bob Hartley? Yeah. I mean, he was even in the prayer room as, as recently as, you know, the end of December. Uh, and I think that he even made a couple appearances at the uh, early part of January as well. Uh, so this is somebody that despite all of this, and I am shocked to be perfectly honest with you that even just recently he was still able to, you know, go into the prayer room. Uh, and he, that he was even, you know, permitted on premises there. But again, this all speaks to the way that IHOP KC has handled this. Uh, and Harley even said that uh, for some of these 
allegations that are being put out there against him that he's even going to sue these individuals and says that he has some information on them too that they're not going to want to come out talk about a mess and and i want to point this out too because someone said this the other day in a comment that was just spot on you know when you talk about restoration of these so-called prophets pastors whatever for so many of them they never walked with god to begin with so what are you restoring them back to they're not saved to begin with you got to start with them at the basics, back to the basics, right? The very beginning. So it just continues to play itself out from here. Uh, Michelle Seidler, too, I'll just say this in closing. Uh, she she said that uh, she is very happy that, and she called it a small step, uh, the fact that Hartley is banned from the prayer room. Uh, but no doubt a lot more needs to be done. Uh, and we'll continue to expose it and talk about it here because we are bringing awareness uh, to these organizations who, you know, are cosplaying as Christian ministries when really uh, they are nothing more than a den of lions uh, devouring uh, or trying to these survivors. I welcome your thoughts on this. You can chime in down below in the comment section. And uh, yes, I will have more information on this over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash notbysightnews. You can find that there. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, and that's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. Of course, I talk about the end time Bible prophecy headlines, keep you guys up to speed and everything else going on. I do it because, yes, we're in the last days, really the final hours, and Christ is coming soon. For anybody watching right now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin, which means to turn from sin. Not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways. But to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors. Things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away, and the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Don't forget, the links to donate to the ministry are there as well. Join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews, link in the description, or just hit the super thanks button down below on this video here where you can tip me with a one-time donation. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.